Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we've got Edis military watch review. It's luminous, it's tactical, it definitely looks the part, but does it actually deliver? Hi and welcome to the channel, where we go that extra mile to bring you in-depth honest reviews. If you're already subscribed, thank you and very warm welcome back. And if you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It does help us to bring you more quality content. In this video, we will do our usual checks, dimension specifications, and I will of course highlight what I think are strong points of this watch and what points to watch out for. And with this particular watch, of course, a peculiar case of small print that I believe deserves special attention. Let's talk money first. If this watch looks familiar, there is a good reason for it. Just have a look at this Luminox Ever Navy Seal watch. So, with this watch costing less than 10 the price, and you probably noticed we love a good homage on this channel, I couldn't pass a chance to give it a go. I paid 24.75 US dollars for this watch. I got it from 80s official store on AliExpress, which is always my preference, especially when trying the new brand. This watch is currently available for pretty much the same price, between 27 and 30 US dollars. If you apply coupons and whatever discounts you can find on AliExpress, you could actually pay them less. Also, this watch is available for even cheaper price from other retailers on AliExpress. At its official store dispatched it within 48 hours, and about two weeks later, it arrived to United Kingdom. As I said in the introduction, the 80s has all the characteristics of the tactical military style. Unidirectional bezel, field watch laid out indices 1 to 12 and 13 to 24, of course, so called tritium gas luminous tubes above our markers and on the hands. More about it later. We also get an appropriate rugged looking box, which is nice, especially given the price point. There is a user manual, a card, I guess this meant to represent some kind of warranty card, and the watch with tag. The watch also proclaims to be diving watch, but at 50 meter water resistance I cannot take this seriously, as well as the whole name of the watch. Is it Eddies or Eddies, as it says on the dial? Well, at this price point I don't think it is important, or am I being too lenient? We wouldn't expect this from Casio watches, which cost less than 20 bucks, so maybe we should expect some more attention to details here as well. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let's take a closer look at the dimensions. The case diameter is about 45 mm, the unidirectional bezel has 43 mm diameter, the height of the watch is about 14.3 mm or 13.8 mm if you measure from the crystal. So the bezel ring protrudes about half a millimeter above the crystal, providing some additional protection from potential bumps and knocks, which is good. Like with it, the first glance looks like 22 millimeters. However, what seems like an end link is actually part of the case, and the real lug width is just over 14 millimeters. Lug tip to lug tip is 51.7 millimeters. Comparatively short lug to lug distance keeps this watch from looking oversized. Actually, it wears quite well. Here it is on my 7 inch wrist. The weight is 155 grams on the supplied bracelet and 141 grams after adjusting the bracelet to my about 7 inch wrist. More about the weight later. It is tricky to figure out what the bracelet is made of, but it has cool feeling like a metal and it feels solid and weighty like metal, so my best guess is that it is PVD coated metal bracelet. The bracelet tapers slightly towards the clasp from about 22 mm to about 20, and then we have about 22 mm pressed clasp. At this price point, I think it is quite an acceptable option. The clasp has a double push mechanism with additional secure lock, no complaints here whatsoever. More than sufficient at this price point, in my opinion. The bracelet should cover about 8.25 inch wrist. If we examine the dial, there is a minute track which is composed from printed minute and luminous markers. As I mentioned earlier, there are 1 to 12 and 13 to 24 hour markers in line with the military field style of the watch. Framed date window at 3 o'clock is big enough to be readable, could be bigger, but the date font is nice and crisp. There is a logo at 12 o'clock which looks at a bit of a distance very similar to Luminox layout. I guess this is pure coincidence, right? <laughs> Otherwise, the dial is not cluttered and quite legible, thanks to the big bright white indices against the black background of the dial. 
the wooding says tritium gets luminous, more on this in a moment, and water resist 50 meters. There is a loom coating or some kind of resemblance of, of tubes on the minute track and on hands, including the second hand, which is good. Also on the bezel peep, which again is nice and makes the rotating bezel usable in the dark. Now all this is positive, however, as you might have guessed by now, the loom or whatever it is calls tritium gas luminous and, and which is the key selling point of this watch is actually not tritium. And this is where the small print comes in. There is some kind of luminous quartz tubes being used. The small print note in the listing description gives us a bit of an explanation of what is actually used. Here it is. I personally find this, should I say, a bit confusing. Okay, I might agree that it is unrealistic to expect tritium at this price point, however, I still think that the listing could have been more upfront about it. What do you think? Please let us know in the comments. Now, the tritium, or rather not tritium, actually doesn't mean that the actual loom is bad. It is a cake and is better than some $100 watches from AliExpress that I've reviewed in the past. I will post the shot at the end of the video, so definitely have a look. This watch has a flat mineral glass crystal, which I think is absolutely fine at this price point. No anti-reflective coating, but the dial is still very legible, even in the sunlight. As already mentioned, the bezel slightly protrudes above the crystal, which serves as an extra protection. Moving on to the case, the back case is stainless steel, as it clearly says here. The rest, I guess, is PVD coated alloy, so I wouldn't expect any high quality materials at this price point. I'm not sure how long the coating will last, so after one week of test wearing this watch, no visible scratches, but then again, I've been extra careful. The crown has two positions, for time and quick set date adjustment. The crown is not threaded, which I guess explains only 50 meters of water resistance. There is a 60-click unidirectional bezel with a loomed peep. The bezel action is very lousy and the back clay is really bad. No point of sugarcoating this one. I guess there is only so many features Eddie's could squeeze in to allow for a $25 price tag. Eddie's only states that it used a quartz movement. But going beyond the call of duty for our viewers, I decided to check what's inside anyway. And it is Japanese Miyota quartz movement which is, in my opinion, adds some reassurance of reliability of this watch. Also, while I had the back case open, I checked for rubber seals, which is in place and will help with dust and water resistance, which of course is positive. Ok then, and now we're coming to the part where we talk about prawns and cones. Well, there are a few things that actually could have been done better, and I'm not going to complain here that Eddie's didn't use Sapphire Crystal. All my complaints will be taking into the account the price point of this watch. But just before we go on, if you're enjoying this video, give us a like. So first, of course, the whole tritium small print. I think they should have been more upfront on this, because I actually know some customers who only realize that there was no tritium after the purchase. Number two is the bracelet attachment to the case. The end links are done really weirdly. I feel like I need to file the lugs here to allow for end links to swing fully. Otherwise, there is a pivotal point tension which can force the bracelet to pop out if you bent it too much towards the case, which can be easily evidently done. I actually did it when I was taking off the stickers and unwrapping the bracelet. And the number three is the weight of the watch. The Luminox, for the record, only weighs 58 grams or just over 2 ounces if you are in US. This watch is almost 3 times that weight. This is a bit of a personal preference, I guess, but after using Featherlight Casio G-Shock, wearing this watch feels quite different. And with a tiny quartz movement inside, I'm not sure what else commands such weight. As for the positives, well, it packs quite a few useful features. First, of course, the loom. Putting aside the whole tritium small print thing, it is probably one of the best loomed watches you can get at this price point. Then, of course, the rotating bezel. Yes, the bezel action is lousy, however, it is very seldom you get a rotating bezel at this price point to start with. And this one also has a well loomed peep. Then, of course, a bracelet. It's a good bracelet and a bit of a push above the current price point. And then the overall look of the watch and legibility. The watch definitely looks the part and will be legible in most light conditions. And that's what you would expect from a military-style watch. 
It is an interesting watch and I will leave a link in the description for you to check it out. What do you think you are better off getting for the same price? Trusted Casio or Timex Expedition for that matter? Well, let us know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.